Welcome to the Brad and Taylor Show. Today we have Scott Wheaton. You're listening to the Brad and Taylor Show, a podcast that inspires entrepreneurs to pursue their passions. We're sitting down with some of the best to learn how they got started and some lessons they learned along the way. Hey, Scott. Hey there, guys. How How are are you? you? Great. I am excited to be here today, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Yeah. no problem. So what, what do you do? I actually have a real estate team. Um, Dominic Lee and I have a company here at Berkshire Hathaway. Tommy Rains right now called Real Estate Redesigned. Nice. Um, so we got into the business as realtors about three years ago and uh, joined a team similar to what we now own um, and then decided to start our own this about a year ago. Yeah, awesome. So when you guys, uh, well, for you, when you, because uh, I remember Dominic, and then, yeah. uh, um, but when you were younger, did you want to be an agent when you grew up? Because I know you were, you kind of guys started all kind of early um, yeah. compared to so the normal. <laughs> I, got, I got started in this industry when I was 19. So that's a very common oh, question wow. I get asked. Yeah. But no, I did not want to be an agent. I only knew one realtor and they weren't really the type of person I wanted to be. Yeah. And so I was like, that wasn't even something on my radar. Yeah. Um, I did know that I wanted to be in a spot where I could utilize my skills and be the best in the industry. Like that was my thing is I was like, I'm a very competitive person and I wanted to be, I wanted to have potential to be the best I could possibly be in that industry. So I knew that was kind of my thing. And I was also very financially motivated from a young age, but I always knew I wanted to be able to provide for my family and hopefully create generational wealth. So those were always things for me. Um, But originally the, the first couple of things that started popping up into my head were like professional jobs, you know, where it's like, Cause that's what you hear when you're young. I was yep. like, Oh, doctors make the most money. I want to be a doctor or I want to be an engineer. Like I know they make good money and they get to create things, which I thought was really cool. So those were always kind of the things on my radar up until I started taking difficult classes. Honestly, <laughs> and I realized I did not have the skills that would put me in a place where I could highly perform in either of those careers. I was like, that's not where my superpower is, if you will. Yeah. So I was like, um, I really need to narrow that down and figure out what I'm highly capable of doing and then really go 100% into that. So that was kind of my way of finding real estate. Um, My original connection to real estate was, like I mentioned, I didn't really know any realtors. So this wasn't even on my radar at that time. But I had a lawn service and I was mowing for a guy who was a real estate investor. And he owned like 10 properties. And I was probably 16 because I was driving around Lansing mowing these lawns <laughs> and he could see that I was super motivated. I was like lifting my mower in and out of my truck. And he was like, all right, this is, guy's a young entrepreneur. Like he's going to get into real estate at some time as a lot of entrepreneurs do. And so he's like, let me know if you ever have any questions about real estate investment. Like I would love to share what I know with you. Cause I didn't really have a mentor when I got into this. And I know how beneficial that could be. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, I'm all ears. I'd love to hear anything <laughs> like share anything with me. And so he started talking to me about how these houses that he had in Lansing were like quads. So they were like, you had four different units inside one house and each of them were bringing in like six to $800 a month. And he was like, my expenses on this are like $800 a month. So I was like, <laughs> I, I just like the wheel started turning immediately. I was like, you are cash flowing like crazy. Like this is such a cool, awesome opportunity for investment that I've never even heard of. And so that got me really interested. He started feeding me some books. So I started reading those. And then that was kind of my initial launch into like my interest in real estate. And so I always knew I wanted to invest in real estate from that time on. So like early teenage years, but I did not know that I wanted to get into sales until um, probably while, when I was in college. Nice. Okay. Nice. So you kind of jumped in at 19, you said, right? So you jumped in fresh out of high school, basically. So yeah. Yeah. So that's that's um, crazy young. I don't feel like anybody else has done that that I know of. So that's awesome (laughs) that where you are, where you are now. Yeah. So Dom and I actually both happened to get into the industry at the same time. Yeah. I think for similar reasons, because we both had a hunch that college was not really for us. But also we come from areas in school districts where it's like an expectation that you just go to college and see if it's for you, you know, and most people have great success with it. So for us, or for me, I guess I'll kind of uh, talk for myself here. And I went to MSU for two years. Um, I started real estate right when I got into it because I had an idea that I might be pretty good at it. I was like, everybody kept telling me that I have a salesman personality. And what I, like I said, I had a lawn service where I had some great success. So um, that was kind of my reason for getting into it. And I didn't really know what it would progress to be, but I knew that if I wanted to invest in, in, in this industry, then I needed to know it like the back of my hand. 
Yeah. And so I figured if I could get a crash course through working in the industry, I would be a hundred percent ready to do it. And so that was kind of my reason for getting into it. And I started calling a bunch of, like, I didn't know anybody. So I just started calling people that I found on Google. I just typed in realtors in Lansing. And I was like, the top realtors are going to pop up. That's all I know about <laughs> marketing is that they pay the most, they get the most, you know, uh, respect on Google. So I started calling them and I was like, Hey, would you mind just getting coffee with me and letting me, me pick your mind? And I would say out of like five, I called, um, I think two or three of them let me actually start a meeting with them. And so, uh, one of those ended up hiring me. He was like, if you get licensed, I'll hire you. And I was like, you, I don't have to have like a college degree to work for you. Like, I don't have to be <laughs> 21. I can be like an 18 year old and get into this industry. And he was like, absolutely go get your license. So I went and I think I like I took the course and that was probably the hardest I've ever studied for an exam. Like I think I kind of <laughs> overstudied for it. Yeah. But I passed it on my first try, called him and I was like, I want a job. Like give me whatever opportunity you're willing to. And so that was kind of like the my entry into the industry. And then my entrepreneurial um, you know, habits kind of took off from there. Nice. So was there any piece of advice that um anyone that you had met with when you were getting coffee that they gave you that kind of just stuck with you? So that was kind of one of the things that there was a lot of learning curves in this industry as I got into it that mm -hmm. kind of made me want to do things differently as I progressed throughout this um, field. And one of those was people tended to be pretty held back and they weren't really willing to share too much with me. It was kind of like they saw me as a competitor, but also kind of wanted to hire me because they saw that I had like a lot of drive and I was willing to do whatever they were willing to show me. But a lot of what I got from that was that it was kind of easy to figure out who was an ally and who was willing to like really help me mm -hmm. get, get started in this career, which I knew was going to be really important as a young person trying to sell like the most expensive asset. You know, everybody's most expensive asset is their house. So I knew I needed to be with the right person who was going to share the most with me. Yeah. And so I could easily figure out who was kind of scared and hold offish and who wasn't really willing to share much. It wasn't going to be able to teach me that much and who was. Um, so for me, I just picked the person who I thought was going to be able to give me every bit of information I needed to make this jump very quickly into being a successful realtor as a young person, because I hadn't really heard of anybody doing that successfully at that point. And so for me, I was like, I really need to be with the person who's going to give me everything that they're willing to. So yeah. Yeah. that was the biggest benefit of those meetings, I think. Take us to your first transaction. How did it go? Because you were very young when you started. Yeah. So I have a feeling like some of the clients might kind of be not wanting someone brand Absolutely. new. So how did that go? <laughs> so the, I always talk about this with new agents all the time, because a lot of the new agents that we're talking to and that come to us to like for advice are younger people. And mm -hmm. I mean, younger people means up to like 25, 26. And like I said, I started when I was 19. Yeah. And so it's like, when you're 19, you've got baby face, like you, you yep. are, <laughs> you're young, you're like almost in high school. And so for me, it was, I focused more on working with buyers for that reason, because it's not like an interview process where you walk up and you interview them. You're like, or do you interview for them, the position? And you're like, well, this is why I'm qualified for the job. I've been in the industry for X amount of years. I've sold X amount of houses. You know, I didn't really see that as working very well for me as like my first transaction. <laughs> I can only really sell myself when I'm very confident in what my capabilities are. And so I was like, I'm going to go be a buyer's agent for a while because that is, it's easier to like prove yourself through that process. Cause like, say you guys were looking to buy a house. I would take you on a lot of showings. I would be there on time. I'd be following up with you guys along the way. I'd be earning your respect over, you know, a month or so prior to you signing a contract with me to work with me. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my thing is I knew that nobody in this industry was going to work harder than me because I had a lot to prove. And so I was like, if I can just position myself with the right people so that I can prove myself throughout like that period, and then, you know, secure the business once I've already proved myself, then I'm going to be able to get this done. So yeah, I worked with a lot of buyers at first. Um, for the first six months I was in the industry, I was working like 40 hours a week while being a full-time student and having my lawn service. <laughs> and so I was a little overextended, but I also didn't have a sale that entire time. So it was like, I had to stay very positive. I was, mm -hmm. you know, keeping my mindset right. I was like, this is going to work. I just need to keep putting in the work and it will work. So um, for six months, I didn't have a single sale. And then finally, after the sixth month, I started getting some momentum and I started figuring out how to keep following up with people in the right way, how to organize everything and uh, how to convert the clients. So 
Um, after six months, I sold six properties um, or no, actually 12 in the, in the second six months of that year. So nice. uh, my first full year, I sold 12 properties, but it took me six months to get that momentum built up so that I could actually get past yeah. the first appointment. But yeah. like you mentioned, it was pretty tough when you're young and when you're trying to prove yourself to somebody, you got to figure out how to use that as a, you know, as a positive rather than a negative. And it took me longer than it should have to figure that out. But I also didn't have a mentor who was there to tell me that. Yeah, you so I had to figure out on your own. Exactly. And so like the first six months, I'm just trying to figure out and Dom and I met on this multiple times because we were in the same exact boat and we were like doing some scripting with each other, trying to figure out how we could turn it into a positive. <laughs> yeah, but we just couldn't figure it out. I was like, everybody is just destroying me at these like showings. They're like, you're younger than my kids. Well, I was, I was significantly younger than a lot of their kids. So I had to figure out ways to turn that around. Uh, when people would ask me how old I was, I would just be like, oh, I'm in my 20s. You know, like that's a pretty broad range. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and then I start, I grew up my facial hair. I was like, I got to present myself. Dom and I wore suits every single day and we still do. And so it's just like figuring out my brand and how to position myself so that I was going to be successful despite the adversity, you know, and despite the challenges of being young. Nice. So what is the worst property you've ever been to? <laughs> so <laughs> I just got. Um, I started doing some more social media stuff like on my Instagram. I just did a, a reel recently. And this is probably this is probably the worst property I've ever been to. It was listed for about twenty thousand dollars in Lansing. And it was owned, it was in a real estate owned property, so it was a foreclosure and it was destroyed. There was a, a tarp as the roof. Wow. And it was right. about two thousand square feet, so it's not small. It was a two-story and all the wallpaper was like off the walls, the drywall and plaster was just hanging. And then the ceiling fans in every single room were drooped down. Like they literally looked like the ceiling fans just got tired and gave up. They were like, we've been in here for a couple of years, like we're done. Yeah. So that was, it's, I've been through a lot of houses. There's been a lot, I would say probably thousands of houses at this point. There, a lot of the lower price points in Lansing, you have to have a very creative investor and a very creative mindset to go in there and see opportunity. Mm -hmm. But there's always opportunity, you know? So I, at this point, it's like, I go into a crappy house, I just get through it and it's done. But sometimes you'll leave and I'm like, I, I got to take this dry <laughs> cleaner. I yep. smell, <laughs> smell terrible. It's like mold and mildew, but you know, it's, it's a fun job for the reason that you get to see all kinds of things. And yeah, you guys get to see a lot, a Absolutely. lot of different things. <laughs> and like meeting, like when we got into the industry, we were working mostly internet leads. So okay. you know, when someone goes on Zillow realtor.com, they hit, I want more information. We give them a call. And so you meet a lot of interesting people that way too, because yeah. you have no, there's no qualifying. There's nothing. All they're doing, all, they just click the link. So um, we met a lot of interesting people that way too, which kind of kept things interesting and <laughs> kept things fun. You never knew who you were going to meet at a show. Yeah. Because if yeah. they just click that link, they don't have to be pre-approved, right? Yeah. It's just like random people who are just wanting to see the home. Okay. Yeah. And so as you can imagine, the conversion rate on those is pretty low as yeah. well. So it requires a ton of work for any type of closing or any type of money to come into our pockets. But it was a great crash course on the industry and it was a great crash course on sales in general. Um, I learned how to be very organized. I learned tracking all of my, you know, every call I ever made. Um, and that way you can look back on those types of things and be like, how can I improve? You know, cause when you are looking at that short or in that small of profit margins and that small of conversion rates, you got to be able to do anything possible to up those. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So where do you think, um, your team is going in the next year? Do you guys have plans for the next couple of years or anything like that? Oh yeah. yeah. We've got, yeah. So meeting with, or when Dom and I met, it was a, like, it was perfect. I don't know how this even happened. We didn't know we were joining the same team. Um, but we were both 19. We got into it. We started talking, you know, we were in the office together every day and most realtors don't come to the office every day. So it was unique already that both of us were there all day, every day. Yeah. And both of us dropped out of college around the same time to, you know, go after this. And so we just started talking and realized that we were like, we had very, very similar goals and ideas, and we really wanted to start our own team. Um, so that was very, very great. I mean, I can't even comprehend doing this on my own. It's so nice to have a partner who's equally like has a very similar mindset and equally mm -hmm. driven. So now we've had our own team for about nine months and we've had some crazy success. So 
our team so far, um, we one of the things that makes our team different is that we've built out a lot of our systems um, ahead of time so that we provide the best service for our clients and we provide the most value to our realtors. And so that's like the biggest thing for us is we, as the owners of our team, we kind of have two clients. You know, we have the clients that are home buyers and sellers, and then we also have realtors that are working for us that we need to make sure that we are providing the best experience for if we want to keep them around and keep them as part of our family. Yeah, for sure. So one thing that we do differently is we've built out a lot of the systems along the way that make that possible. Whereas a lot of uh, teams in the area kind of wait until the volume is there until they're doing a lot of business and then they kind of react to it instead of being proactive. Yeah. And so they just react to having a lot of business and then they try to hire admins. They try to get all these things set up. And so for our team, we've kind of done a lot of that already. And that's one of the things that we think make us a scalable team. So over the next three years, we want to be hiring about five agents a year. Um, so nice. at this point, we've got um, we've hired two agents besides us in our first year so far. Um, we're on track to get a couple more by the end of the year. So we're super excited about that. That keeps us on track for our goal. But our goal is to get it to a point in the next five years where we've ha- we've created this very scalable team and we can uh, look at starting some other offices in different areas, possibly in Michigan or outside of Michigan. But, you know, using this is kind of the template. So we're just trying to work out all the bugs in this and figure out how we can yep. provide the best service possible. Because in an industry like this, you really do have to provide the best service possible and get those raving fans in order for your business to grow exponentially. Yep. And so for us, it's all about creating raving fans. We want all of our clients to go around town talking about us. So in order to do that, you got to be the best. Yep. So that's our that's our kind of five-year plan is to uh, continue to scale and figure out how we can you know plant this idea in another area and expand it there as well, which I know you guys are kind of pros at. <laughs> we're, trying, we're trying, we're trying. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So let's say you had to start all over today and you had $1,000. How would you spend that first $1,000? A thousand dollars. So when I first got into the industry, I did not have a thousand dollars. I'll tell you that it was just, I was, I had really no money. I was hoping that I could make some money. I was working as like a pizza delivery guy after I sold my lawn service. So I could focus on this. And all I did was I just made a list of everybody who knew my name and called all of them. I was just, I called them all and I checked in on them and I was like, I, hope that you would love to support my business. I'm new into this industry. And if you know, I'm not asking for you to send me business right away. I know I'm new, but even if you know of anybody I should network with or anybody who could help me get my career started, that'd be amazing for me. And so as a 19 year old, when you're calling all of your like high school friends, parents (laughs) and saying this to them, I think it earns you a lot of respect. And so for me, I would not change that. I think that was a huge thing that jumpstarted my career and kind of created like the brand that people know me as. Mm -hmm. And um, so I would 100% do that again. Um, I would stay away from Zillow and Realtor.com leads because when you hire a third party to do your lead generation for you, there's, they're making a profit as well. And so it just becomes, it just, you know, waters down the leads that you're getting. Dom and I figured out how to generate the same leads that they're generating for like a one hundredth of the cost. I kind of wish that I had figured that out a little bit earlier. I would have been able yeah. to spend much further. Um, I luckily had a coach who was the owner of the team, so I didn't need to hire any coaching. Um, he also kind of provided us with an external coach as well. Um, but a lot of the education that I learned was the most valuable thing to me. And I knew that that was going to be the way that I built my career. When I first got into this industry, I was like the first year, I don't care if I make a dime. I was like, I just need to be working in this industry as much as possible. I'll pay referral fees to people who give me business. I don't care. Like I just need to close as many transactions as possible so I can learn as much as possible. And so I think, yeah, getting those uh, less expensive leads and probably getting the right mentorship is the first thing that anybody should do in this industry. And there's a lot of free ways to generate business if you get creative. Like we generated a ton our first year through open houses, um, through, you know, floor times at our company, which is where people call into our company and ask to work for the realtor. So there's a lot of ways that you can generate business in any industry for inexpensively. And that's the right way to do it. There's a lot of people that are going to try and sell you business. And I feel like in every industry, and if you fall for those kinds of things, it's not going to go very far. So you just got to dig deep, figure out how to get creative and generate your own business. Yep. That's awesome. So I know you mentioned earlier, um, one of the agents gave you a bunch of books to read. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. This were they just an investor? Okay. And so that was something that actually translated hugely for me because I've always valued education a lot, mm -hmm. but I also had my little bits of beef with the like common education system. And so I like to, I've always kind of liked to read and do audio books and things like that ever since this guy started giving me books. So the first book he ever gave me was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay. Yep. And that's a very common book. I'm sure a lot of people listening to this have read it. If you haven't, I highly suggest going out there and reading this. It's a very simple introduction to real estate investing and kind of just being your own boss. Um, and so I was like 14 or 15 when I started getting into these like business books. Mm -hmm. Um, since then I have been huge on them, especially since I decided not to go the traditional route with education. I, I still value being educated and I think that's so important. Um, so for me, I've always focused on reading these, uh, educational, um, business books and I find them way more interesting than any other type of book anyway. So it's been great <laughs> for me. Audible is amazing. If yep. you don't like, yeah, it is. You don't to read it, or if you're not able to read as much as you'd like to audible is amazing. I mean, that's been huge for me. This year, I made it a goal to read a book a week because I heard of the stat that uh, Americans typically only read about one book a year. And so I was like, I, I'm a huge person when it comes to like giving myself leverage over my competition, which yeah. I see everybody in my competition. <laughs> so for me, I was like, okay, this immediately puts me at a 52 to one odd against everybody else. In <laughs> and so I was like, if I can read 52 books in a year, I know I'm set. Yep. And so... I'm listening to a lot of audiobooks to make that happen. I'm trying to read one, you know, soft or hardcover book and then listen to an audiobook as well every week just to make sure, you know, sometimes they take longer than a week. So that yeah. kind of averages out to be about a book a week. Yep. So that's been really awesome for me. I'm I'm a huge advocate on that and I'm happy to give uh, suggestions as well for anybody who's interested in checking out some books. Yep. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, I like it. I like it. How can people get a hold of you? Um, I'm happy to leave my phone number and email on, I don't know how you guys would like to do that, but yeah, that's whatever. fine. But, you want to leave yeah. it, go ahead. I can leave my cell phone number and email. People can reach out to me however they'd like. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, let's see here. Thanks for coming on and, uh, sharing your story with us today. No problem guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks. Are these working? There we go. Oh, there we go. I think they work. Should we tell them? Uh, Mine keeps falling. It doesn't okay. like my voice. What do we got to tell them? Subscribe. Subscribe? What do we, do we got to point out? Hey, I think there's a subscription button like. It might be, um, it might be there. It might be right there too. Somewhere. Somewhere. Find it. It's red. Yeah. It's and red. it's blue. It's green. I don't really know. It's, it's a color. This mic isn't even attached. Did you plug these in? Well, I guess uh, I wonder if they can hear us. Yeah, I wonder if they hear us. Well, we should probably tell them if, if they can hear us. We should probably tell them also give us a five star review if they listen to on Apple. That's cool. Five, five star stars, review. guys. Share it with everybody they can think of. We won't but, take four stars. I mean, I don't even think these are on. I mean, this no, is, I don't think this is working. This is not working. Yeah.